Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a photo booth film strip so you can preserve your photo memories in a fun, creative way. Since the four photos I'll be using in the film strip were actually taken in a photo booth, I'll use this photo to show you the steps to recreate that look. If your original photos are black and white, go to Image, Mode, and make sure they're RGB color. The first step is to crop them to the same size so we can place them into a film strip. To speed up the process, you could record your actions for your first photo and then simply press play to duplicate them for the others. I covered recording actions in this tutorial. Call up your crop tool and type in 400 by 500 pixels. Crop the photo to your liking and to accept it, click on the check mark at the top or press enter or return. The next step is to remove all the color. To do this, press Ctrl Shift U or Command Shift U on a Mac. If you need to brighten up your image, press Ctrl or Command plus L to call up your levels window. In this particular example, I'll slide the input highlights to bloom them to give them a close flashbulb look. Keep in mind, photo booth photos are generally blown out, high in contrast, and a bit blurry. Go to Filter, Blur, and surface blur. I'll make the radius 2 and the threshold 15. Depending on the sharpness of your photo, you may want to adjust these numbers. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. For this image, I'll blur it by 0.5 pixels. Once you have all four photos cropped to the same size, create a new document. Type in 400 pixels for the width, 2000 for the height, and 300 for the resolution. Go to View and make sure Snap is checked. Open your first photo and drag it up onto the tab of your film strip. With your mouse or pen still held down, drag it down onto the image and release. Drag it up to the top. It'll snap in place because we have Snap checked. Open each consecutive photo and repeat the process. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. Make the position inside, the size 15 pixels, and the color black. To copy the stroke to each photo, press and hold Alt or Option and click down on the FX symbol. Drag it to the layer under it and repeat it for each photo. Click on the icon in the upper right and choose Flatten Image. Many photo booth film strips have a wider black margin on the right, so open your rectangular marquee tool and drag a rectangle on the right side a bit wider than the stroke. We'll fill it with black, and since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. To delete the selection, press Ctrl or Command plus D. Now that we have the basic film strip, let's place it onto a background. Go to File and New. We'll make it 1125 by 2000 pixels and a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Open your film strip and place it onto the background document we just made. Press Ctrl or Command plus T to call up your transform tool. Go to a corner and when you see this double curved arrow, press Shift and rotate it counterclockwise. When it's horizontal, press Enter or Return. Call back up your transform tool and go to the top and click on the warp icon. Open your custom tab and choose flag. We'll bend it 25% and then click on the check mark or press enter or return. Call back up your transform tool and rotate it clockwise, resize it and reposition it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose Photo Filter. Adobe added sepia in CS6. If you're not using CS6, in a minute I'll show you a workaround. We'll make the density 65% and make sure luminosity is checked. Click on this clipping mask icon. It makes the adjustment layer affect only the one layer beneath it. If you're using CS5 or under, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose Color Balance. We'll put in 38 for the cyan and red and minus 34 for the yellow and blue.
Make sure luminosity is checked and click on the clipping mask icon. Reduce the opacity to 60%. I'll go back to using the sepia photo filter. We're ready to change our background. Click on it to make it active and call up your gradient tool. Click on the gradient box and choose foreground to background preset. Click on the lower left stop and the color box. Type in 3074D2. Click on the lower right stop and choose black. Then close out the windows. Go to the center, press and hold shift as you drag a line to the right and then release. Click on the top layer to make it active and then make a new layer. We'll make it into a clipping layer so it'll just affect the film strip. Hover your cursor between the two layers and press Alt or Option. When you see the clipping mask symbol, click down. We're going to brush in some reflective highlights on the edge of the film strip. Call up your brush tool and press F5 to call up your brush presets. If Shape Dynamics is checked, uncheck it. I'm using a 400 point brush with the normal blend mode and the opacity is 90%. Invert the foreground and background colors and click down once on two areas on the right of the film strip. Reduce the size of your brush by pressing the left bracket key and click down once again on both highlights. Make a new layer and clip it. In this layer, we'll brush in a shadow at the bottom of the film strip. Make black your foreground color and this time we'll choose a brush size of 175 pixels and the opacity 80%. Brush across the bottom once and make your background active. Make a new layer right above it. In this layer, we'll brush in a shadow behind the film strip. We'll make the brush size 400, the blend mode normal, and the opacity 100%. Place your brush at the top, mostly over your film strip, and click down. Go to the bottom, press shift, and click down again. Make the opacity 60%. Make the top layer active, and go to view, and press snap to turn it off. Call up your type tool and open your character panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and choose Character. I'm using HoneyScript Lite, which you can download for free at defont.com. Type out your text. I'd like to italicize it, so I'll highlight it and click on the italic icon. I'd like to put it at an angle, so I'll call up my Transform tool, go to a corner, and rotate it. I'll reposition it and then press enter or return. To make another line, I'll make a copy of it, click on it and move it down. Press T to call up your type tool, highlight it and type out your new line. I'd like to make it smaller, so I'll highlight it, reduce the point size, and to reposition it, I'll call up my move tool and move it. I'd like to make a third line, so I'll make the original line active, make a copy, and then move it. Repeat the process to change the line. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.